Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I'm in my office. Let me see when the last time was I had a chat like this. I'm going to look at my thumbnails of my videos. Well, I was chatty with Joe when we did the unboxing, but then it was denim scraps, uh, my quilt of the quilt block of the month. Crazy Daisy. Oh, I did a chat nine days ago. Yeah. So, I'm here to chat. We are getting ready uh, pretty soon to go to an AA meeting, and I'll tell you a little bit about that. You knew I was like really enjoying AA meetings, but then you knew I kind of had a little bit of a sore spot with how they promote that they're not a God kind of group, and but there's a lot of use of the word God in the writings and things like that, and especially here in the South, there's a lot of people who... Um, you know, they say spiritual, but some I think it's more religious. But they have an understanding of the typical God that at least I was brought up with, and that many were. And they, um, okay, I'm going to have an analogy in a minute. I don't know if that will be a good analogy or not. My thing is, if they say they're not about that, then it shouldn't be, uh, and, and I can't read anything out of the books, because I don't have the books, uh, but it's mentioned a lot, God with a capital G, Him with a capital H. So right there, they're making the assumption that the God of my understanding or anyone's understanding, that's how they promote it now, the God of your understanding. And they believe in the higher power, a higher power. And... <clears throat> That's just not my thing, you know what I mean, jelly bean? But it's okay that it's other people's thing. I don't care, but I would have liked to know how preachy it can be before going there. It's even too preachy for Joe many of the times, and he's even said he's walked out of meetings that are too preachy. About a month ago, it was a preachy meeting, and not only was it preachy, but, you know, it assumes that that's the way to go. And some say, you'll never stay sober if you don't believe in God and give yourself to God. And it's like, I, I, I'm i sober. I stayed sober a long, long time. <laughs> and then a person said something and, and said, it's okay, you know, if you don't believe in God, something like that, but you really need to do a lot of searching as to why not, something like that. And I thought, see, it's just assumed by people who believe the way they believe that they're right, that they're the ones that are doing the good thing, and then the others need to be brought to that. That's what I don't like. So here's the analogy I came up with. Um, let's say you're going to AA, and it's a non-smoking meeting. <laughs> but you walk in, and almost everyone there is smoking. And you say, why, why does it say it's a non-smoking meeting, but everybody smokes? And they would say something like, oh, you, you don't have to smoke. It's okay if you don't smoke. But, you know, if you stick around with us long enough, we're going to get you to be a smoker the fuck? Uh, that's how it feels to me. And then they'll point out there are some other non-smokers. Uh, so, you know, if you don't like it, just be like them. Just be quiet. When it comes to your turn, you know, before you start talking, you know, if you're not going to, like, take a nice drag off that cigarette, then you could just pass. Just say pass. Like, you know, it's really a good idea to take a drag off your cigarette before you talk, but it's okay, because, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to smoke. We're not going to, you know, think anything less of you if you don't smoke. Um, but try smoking. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so, uh, you, you know, I just wish that they could admit that they're a very Christian-based group with God as the higher power. But they don't. <clears throat> and... Um, so a month ago, when it became my turn to speak, and I was next to the last, and I had to listen to a lot of people saying stuff that I absolutely did not agree 
with in you know again what bothers me the most is and the, yeah, the topic was about how people you know they say oh some people leave because they say it's all about God and but we're not about God and we don't push people away they're running away because they want to go back to the booze and you know I was like um, I'm one of the people who left AA because of the God thing 24 years ago and I did fine on my own and I, you know, I made a point, my point, that uh, it does push people away because not everybody thinks like that. And again, at the end, and I even cried in that meeting because I, I was so sad because I liked the people and I did like to hear the stories. I just didn't like that, um, just that... Mm. people who can't just let everybody be who they are, but you're going to say, but Darlene, you're not letting them be who they are. I am letting them be who they are. I just wish that it would be told, this is how this group is. Because I got involved in something that at first I was like, okay, I'll just do what they say. I'll take the good away with me and I'll just forget all this other stuff. But it's not fun to be somewhere where you start to enjoy the people and you really can't have your conversations and have somebody else be like, oh, that's cool. You know what I mean? Um, when they're talking about their beliefs, others are agreeing with them and stuff. If I were to talk about my beliefs, I even said to them, you can stone me. You know, I was ready to go gather the rocks. <laughs> so, uh, so I stepped away from it. Uh, again, I want everyone to do their own thing and I'm very interested in what other people do say believe remember I'm the one who would be glad to sit with Jeffrey Dahmer uh, at dinner I would I would be so interested in him and what he has to say because I just think that uh, we all are who we are and the people who do believe in God they'll pray for the sinners, but it's like, why can't they say, wow, he's, uh, you know, a child of God too, so let's just, um, let's just say that, you know, whatever, let's leave it up to God if he did right or wrong, but they're very judgmental, the ones that I'm around, very judgmental, it's just like the people who bitch at me for swearing on my videos, it's like, I just can't wrap my head around it. Grown-ass adults watching a video getting mad at me because I swear on my channel and it's so obvious that I enjoy swearing and they want to just take the rug out from under me and say, fuck that shit. No, they wouldn't say that. Um, stop talking like that because it's not appropriate. <laughs> so, um, yeah, um, and again, I am never going to go to someone's channel and say, God, you better start swearing. I wish you would swear or I'm not going to watch you. I don't care what they do. It's their their place, and I appreciate everyone and anyone. I really do. And it just sounds like I'm very uh, disliking things because I just it doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense to me to say, we don't do this, but then you're doing it. That It's just like, huh? So it makes me feel like, can I trust? Can I trust this? If a group of people can say, uh, we're a non-smoking group, but we all smoke, because that's the thing to do. And stick around. We'll get you to be to that point. You know, I would just be like, huh? Why can't they just say we're a smoking group and then let me decide if I want to go sit in that group or not and smell all the smoke? Just like if they said uh, AA is a Christian-based, God-based group, then it's up to me to go or not. And if I go, I'm going to be comfortable in knowing because I've already been given that information that this is the way it's going to be. Just like if I were to walk into, I don't know, some other religion or something that I know nothing about, I'm not going to go in there and be like... <sighs> Oh my God, you know, if I go into a, uh, um, I don't even know what Jewish churches are, a synagogue, is that one a synagogue? See, I was not allowed to know those things as a kid because you couldn't know anything but the Catholic things. <laughs> um, 
I would love to learn about more religions and things like that. I, I just like people to be up front and not play games yeah. like that. Okay, I didn't mean to talk about that that much. But, yeah, so I went a whole, I went three weeks. I Okay, I went to that particular group. Was it last night we went? Or the night before? For the first time in a month. I didn't go for a whole month because I was... So just, uh, I lost, you know, some of the people. Oh, and I stopped going to Al-Anon, too. I only went to, like, I think four meetings total, two different meetings at two different groups. Loved it, but then it became gossipy and godly. And we were just a small group, so there was no way I could just, like, step back and play on my phone while, you know, they're having discussions that I just didn't really care to be a part of. Um, so I left all of that, and then I was very, very sad for a little bit. But three weeks later, so a week ago, I went to a different meeting. I told Joe I won't stop going to meetings with you because he really enjoys going. It's like his social thing, and um, and he can talk, you know, work, get business contacts, things like that. Um, but I told him I would go, but I said, you know, maybe just not our usual one for a while and he wholeheartedly believes that we should constantly be AA hopping because he has been doing this for a long time he's been going to AA for 27 years and uh, he said that you know it can get old and you can hear the same people over and over again and you know if you don't like what they're pushing because he does not like anybody to push anyone to think that they have to do a certain thing or they're going to fall off the wagon. He believes everybody has their own way of doing stuff. He just wants people to get sober if they want to. So last week we went to a different group and I enjoyed it. I liked it. Uh, it was godly, but you know, I'm going into that group just knowing this is the way it's going to be now everywhere. And um, but it wasn't it wasn't like the other group. But now it could be. Now if I were to keep going there, I might find things that it's like, okay, that was a bit overboard. And somebody mentioned a group to me that is supposed to not be a 12-step group and not promote a higher power or make you feel less than if you don't believe in that or that you have to give yourself up to somebody in order to be saved. And I can't remember the name of it, but I looked into it and I talked to Joe about it. And Joe said, they, they still talk about it. They do, they do. So it's like, you know, um, everybody, you know, whatever they believe, they're allowed to say it. But I did read in the, um, the rules of that group, and there's only one per week in Memphis. It's a drive for me, and it's once per week, and then almost all of the other ones are online. I have no interest in doing that at all. Uh, they did say, though, that they will stop people if they go off topic or if they, uh, you know, they'll stop people from talking. The, the people who chair the meetings are supposed to be trained to know how to handle it, to say, no, we don't say those things here or we don't promote that here, uh, we don't judge here, things like that. <clears throat> I'd be interested in going, but I, right now I can't even remember the name of it. So, um, but we went and now we're going tonight. Uh, and one of the men that Joe knows, nice guys, fun. Um, he asked us if we'd ever been there. He says, I haven't been to that group yet. And we said, sure, and we'll go if you want to go. So we all decided we were going to go tonight, a Friday night. I haven't been out. I skipped two whole weekends that I haven't been out. This weekend, I'm okay with missing Friday and Saturday because I'm a little bit tired of it. I'm tired of getting ready, going. And it's just, you know, I have fun here at home now. And, but uh, Sunday night, we're going to South Haven Sidecar for Gen X and Jeff, uh, Derek's uh, sidekick on his podcast, The Real, no, not The Real Hernando, um, he has a lot of podcasts, uh, The Rhythm Section Podcast, he's the drummer, and we're going to go see them. So there's all good things about that. It's at 7, 7 to 11. That's early enough for Joe. But I told him we still don't have to stay for the whole thing. It's close. It's only like a 15-minute ride. So we love that. There's no cover charge, so it's cool. If we don't like it and we just want to leave, I, I, we like it. I know I like it. But if Joe doesn't feel good or something and we want to leave, we can. It's, you know, we didn't pay anything to get in. 
And, you know, it's a group that Joe hasn't heard yet, and I think he will like them. I've heard them a couple times. And so, uh, and Derek will be there. So that's always good. I don't know if LaShawn will be, but if she's there, that will be good. And uh, so we're going out Sunday night, so I'm at least going to have that, assuming that Joe is able to. And, you know, if he's just tired or whatever, I'm still going. And um, I just got back from the post office, and I'm having post office issues where they're not scanning my packages. So it shows on eBay that, or even on PayPal, um, which they go through ShipStation, which has another name now. It shows that I bought the postage, the shipping label, but that I didn't bring it to the post office. Now, of course I did. I've been doing this 24 years. I'm not about to just, you know, pay shipping and not bring the package. So, one, I already refunded her. It took 18 days from when I dropped it off for them to scan it. And But I thought, oh, you know what? I had put some in a mailbox by Walmart, uh, and I thought maybe that is why. And there were a few others that were in that shipment. They got scanned, but they were still delayed. So I said, not doing that anymore. Always at the post office. And I talked to them about it. And then still by doing it at the post office and dropping it, not their outside box, but their inside box in the building, uh, something gets scanned. And so that's a little bit of an issue for me. So now, for the third time, I go there and I stand in line. I have them scan them and give me the receipt. Because I need some kind of proof to eBay or wherever or just to the customer themselves or even if I refund the customer I feel like I should be able to file the the claim to get my money back because I can show that it was scanned and dropped off now it was in the post office's hands but I have somebody waiting and I just I hate stuff like that I feel so bad um, but I do refund them I mean if I'm out the money I'm out the money it's just I don't want to you know upset a customer or have somebody pay for something that they never got and that I can't even prove to them that I actually went to the post office with it. So, my bad. I've never had that issue in uh, all the years of mailing. I've never had something not scanned and now all of a sudden it's a thing. And uh, I, I'm petrified <laughs> every time I look at my old ones. I'm like, please, please get there. Please get there. Um, but I have some that show that I didn't I didn't drop it off. That The post office never received it. That's bullshit. I guess I'm going to stop because I want to edit this and we're going to be going to the meeting. And, um, yeah, and, oh, yeah, so, and I did want to mention also that I, I know you guys, uh, some of you think Joe doesn't talk much or whatever in those videos. He's very serious and he is, he's, you know, that he is still like a little bit shy. I can't even believe he does it at all. But he wanted to. He's like, when he got that box, he's like, you want to do a video? And uh, I'll be st stacking fabric. <laughs> he included himself. So I knew he got a kick out of that. He doesn't watch the videos. He used to watch my videos. But then I said one time, I'm like, I feel weird when you watch my videos. He doesn't watch them anymore. And I think he feels like he might feel weird. I'm going to probably play that one tonight and say, look, look at, just look at it and stuff. And um, it, I get a kick out of it because it's just fun and funny. Of course, I'm still nervous. Um, is he going to say something or do something? And, you know, I try to remind him now, you know, we try not to cough. If you think you're going to have a coughing fit, tap me. I'll shut the camera. We'll let you cough because he has um, COPD and He's been coughing a lot lately. Allergies and stuff have been bothering him. Anyway, so, you know, stuff like that. I try to remind him, but... Uh, and I am always shy talking to somebody at the beginning. So it was the perfect way when we did that first unboxing because I knew I didn't have to have a conversation with him. I was still talking to the camera, and he was just behind me um, stacking fabric. And once we got through that one, I was like, oh, this is this is the way to do this. He can be busy, and then I'll just be doing my stuff. And then little by little, I said, we'll end up chatting and stuff. And it's going to be it's gonna be fun, I think, for me anyway. And, um, yeah, so uh, he does want me to show him how to sew, and I do want to do that. 
And uh, but he said no, we didn't get enough orders for me to sew for them. Because <laughs> I think he ended that video saying something like bye. I thought he was saying bye. Well, I know he says bye. I thought he was saying bye like goodbye. But he was saying bye like b u y to buy my fabric. <laughs> then he would sew. <laughs> He's always looking out for for me. He's a good salesman. Um, He's always telling me, bring me some, give me some samples and give me some business cards and I'll bring them around when I'm out and I'll, I'll try to find people. It's like, oh my God, Joe, I can't do that. It, 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 it's like, ugh, makes me feel like, ugh, even when he talks about doing stuff like that, even for his own business. I don't even like to be around it. I was never a good salesperson for my own things, which is why uh, online is good for me because I'm, you know, there's actually a distance, you know, I'm not right dealing face to face with someone okay so i'm going to uh hang up now and yeah just uh would be curious if anybody out there has stopped going to aa or just didn't like it it wasn't their thing uh just because they didn't feel like they were included because that's what i was trying to tell everybody there i don't feel like i'm included in this I feel like I'm an outsider. And when you have people say, well, just ignore that, what you don't like, and take home what you do like, I don't want to be in that kind of a club. I want to be in a club where I'm having fun with people, you know, and that they're interested in what I have to say, and I'm interested in what they have to say, talking about it, not pushing it on somebody else. I like to talk about stuff. I do. All right, I'm going to hang up now. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back with more soon. Oh, go look at my eBay. I put some, oh, I put some cool scraps. I used to do scrappy pre-cuts, or I'm calling them scrappy cruts. Scrappy cruts. Scrappy cuts. Um, and there's 96 pieces, and there's only one that's two and a half inch squares. There's eight of each different print. So there's 12 different prints, and there's eight pieces in each. Two and a half inch square-ish uh, is the smallest, and it goes up to like five by five and a half. And there's different sizes in between there. And it starts at one penny with free shipping. Outside USA has to pay shipping. And then I just put some scrappy strips, and then you'll see my store and see what else I have. Um, I'm just having fun with fabric again. I love it. And, and with Joe being involved, oh my God, it's like it's letting me order more so we can sell more. And yeah, so, um, and to everybody who never hears me say this, the link to my auction is in the description of this video. Or, if you don't know how to find that, because it can be hard to find, my blog, darlenemisho.com, spelled just like it is on this channel. Go to my blog, and you will see uh, uh, links in the sidebars. It'll get you to my eBay store, okay? For real now, I'm leaving. Bye.